design is a rewarding and enjoyable career that offers the ability to work at home as a freelancer or as part of a large company. You can fill the role as a graphic designer in several ways, including a full-time in-house designer, a full-time freelance designer, or work at an ad agency as a graphic designer. So how do you become a graphic designer? A lot of people ask me that question and they want a step-by-step -step instructional guide to how to become a graphic designer. So this lesson will do just that and break it down to a nice simple step-by-step -step instruction. So what do I learn first and where do I get started? It's a little overwhelming at first for a lot of people. To become a confident graphic designer, you need to lay down some basic design theory foundations. Design theory is at the heart of strong design and can include things like color, layout, and typography theory. These are the core principles that make up most graphic design projects. Think about what grabs your attention when scrolling through your Instagram or Facebook feed. Ask yourself, what makes me want to click on that ad? This is the critical question you help answer for companies and clients when you are a graphic designer. What is the headline? What's the font choice? the size of the type, the way the photo is cropped, the color palette, what was used. Here is a shortened list of some vital design theory terms and techniques. I would encourage you to learn to train your designer's eye and build a solid theory foundation. First of all, color theory. Know how to combine colors for certain situations. Color harmonies. Learn the standard color harmonies and how different colors are connected via the color wheel. Typography. This is a big one. Know the difference between different font types like sans serif, serif, script, decorative, and more. Font pairing. Be able to pair different typefaces together in one design document and have them look cohesive. Type and layout hierarchy. Learn how to focus the viewer on the most important items first to the least important. Layout, knowing which layouts work best for certain situations. Contrast and scale, learn how to use contrast and scale. Design psychology, understand how to set the mood and the tone for a design piece that matches the desired emotion you want to evoke. Of course, there are many other design theory fundamentals that you want to master. So this is a shortened list, but these are some of the big ones to help get you started. So what's the next step? It's time to learn the industry standard design software. Once you feel confident with the basics of design theory, you're ready to start practicing your design knowledge in practical ways. There are some choices when it comes to learning design software. The industry standard software is the Adobe Creative Cloud suite of products. The three most commonly used Adobe products that graphic designers use daily are Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. There are alternative design programs you can learn if the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription is a bit too expensive for you. One option is a company called Serif. It is called the Affinity Suite and it includes Affinity Photo, which is a photo editing program, Affinity Designer, a vector program, and Affinity Publisher, a layout program. Lastly, there are free open source software options. They may not have all the bells and whistles as the Aformation software, but they provide a similar experience. For photo editing, there is one called GIMP, and for a vector program, there is one called Inkscape. But no matter which one of the above software choices you choose, you at least have to master one of the following software types and have it on your get to know list. First of all, master a photo editing software. So this can be Photoshop, Affinity Photo, or GIMP. Photos can play vital roles in graphic design, so learning a photo editing software is imperative to be able to edit those photos, but to also be able to prepare and create graphics for the web, like web headers, social media images, animated GIFs, and more. And then there's a vector-based software. So this could be Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, or something like Inkscape. A vector-based program is where you can create most of your logo designs, icons, and illustrations. 
Vectors are scalable graphics, meaning you can stretch a graphic or logo 10 times its size, and it still remains crisp and clear. Vector software has something called the pen tool as well, which makes crafting and editing custom shapes for logo designs, icon designs, and more a breeze. Lastly, the final software type you should learn is some layout software. So this could be your Adobe InDesign or Affinity Publisher. And knowing layout software is required if you want to be able to do layout and design large books, magazines, and PDFs. Layout software was created to handle a large amount of pages. It also has extra paragraph management tools and options that help you create different types of layouts that you see in magazines and catalogs. So what is the next step after we've learned theory and now we know some of the software? Now we need to learn how to create a wide variety of popular design projects. This is a lot of students' favorite part. They get to use the software and design theory knowledge to create real stuff. And as they say, practice makes perfect, and that cannot be more true when it comes to learning graphic design. Graphic designers have to be able to produce such a wide variety of project types. Your job now will be to learn to create each project type and the unique process involved in their creation. Moving through each one of these design tasks will help you not only understand how to put them together technically, but to also help you figure out your design focus and your unique design style. For example, logo design. And logos are an in-demand popular graphic design task, from sketching concepts to recreating your sketch in vector format to incorporating color. Logo design can be very rewarding graphic design focus. It takes some time to master, but I encourage you to create one logo design each day or even participate in a logo a day challenge, like the one you see here, to get comfortable with the logo design brainstorming process. Then there's branded materials and print projects. Companies employ graphic designers to put their brand on all sorts of items, from t-shirts, hats, stationery, large banners, signage, and more. As a graphic designer, you'll need to not only know how to design a great layout for these products, but also be able to use the software to size and export files for professional reproduction and printing on these items. There's also editorial design, and a graphic designer can be in charge of creating an entire magazine layout. This will include deciding where the article's headlines and photos go on a page, the front cover of the magazine or publication, and more. This also can include book and catalog layouts. You'll also want to know how to prepare and export these files so they can be produced and printed by professional printing companies. Custom graphics, icons, and illustrations. Some graphic designers like to do custom illustrations and digitize them. You see this a lot on custom illustrated t-shirt designs, bags, and other type of apparel or home decor. And that's just scratching the surface of graphic design projects. That's a whole lot to learn. And you might ask, am I supposed to master all of those project types? And here's my suggestion. Try out several of the popular graphic design project types listed above to see if you enjoy certain types more than others. There's no way one graphic designer can be amazing at all the different project types. It's impossible. That's why there's graphic design specialties, such as a print designer or a logo designer. A graphic design focus is where you can specialize in one or two project types and become very proficient over time. So what's the next step now? Is to find a supportive design community. What good is a graphic designer without a community of fellow colleagues? Most formal four-year design programs have classes full of fellow students to relate and connect with. What about those learning online? There's several great websites that can help you join together with other designers to provide feedback on your work and to give feedback to others. There's also some great Facebook, YouTube, and other social media communities you could be a part of too. I happen to have a Facebook group for my students to give and receive feedback on projects, and it's very active. It's a lovely community that provides positive support and advice. Some of the other more common places to find other designers and post your work are the following. I also suggest following some wonderful designers in your chosen focus area. This allows you to keep up with what's trending and what's successful in the world of design. 
Following others you, keeps you motivated and can help you find a little design inspiration. So the next step, kind of an unspoken step, but kind of important because we want to learn how to become a graphic designer. Some of us for fun, but some of us to make a living or to make some side income. So I've given you the framework for getting started and perhaps you feel a little bit overwhelmed with all you need to learn. After all, you are learning new concepts, software, and how to put it all together in action. But the first thing I want you to do is to relax. You've got this. Just take it one step at a time. Becoming a graphic designer does take a little bit of patience, but with each new endeavor, you will gain confidence and experience through time. I would start off with a smaller little projects and work your way up to large projects, depending on what your design focus will be. You can slowly move your way to some paid work, and this might be testing the waters by finding a small job on a website called Upwork or Fiverr.com, or it may mean connecting with local businesses to see if they need any design work. There's also the option of applying to full-time entry-level positions at a company. This would require you to build and design a portfolio that contained all of your practice work you've created at this point. But that's another article and another course for another day. Once again, try not to feel overwhelmed. Once you start down that road of lear this learning journey, you'll find that graphic design is an incredibly exciting and rewardable career. <laughs>